Hello, my name is Blanca with Furniture with Imagination. And today's piece is going to be a Christmas armor. What I'm going to be doing with this piece, I already sanded it down, not completely because I wanted this darkish color to remain because I didn't want to actually restain it again. Uh, as you know, this is pine and pine uh, is kind of like a very light wood, but I wanted that little warm look. Um, so I kind of sanded it, but not fully, completely uh, down um, to the white pine. Um, so it has this really nice warm look. So what we're going to be doing today is a technique called whitewash. This is not watered down paint. And I think I did a similar video a few weeks ago with um, black wash. It's a tiny little bit different. Uh, very similar to that one um, where you're going to be able to appreciate still the wood grain um, without fully covering completely because I really want this beautiful grain and uh, the wood to actually show. So for the outside it's going to be white and in the inside we're going to be painting some areas with a different paint and what I'm going to be using is for the outside, I love Baha's Buff. This is a white. And for some parts in the inside, I'm gonna be using Scarlet, frankly Scarlet, which is a red. I'm gonna be using in some parts Rusing Wax. And I'm gonna decorate some parts in the inside with this mesh pencil. It's gonna be a very special piece. I hope you enjoy it. It's a different technique. You can use paint in so many different ways. Only your imagination is the limit, okay? So please talk to your friends. We're gonna be giving away today uh, once they paint. Tell me from where you're watching, please. I always enjoy seeing from where our audience is. And ask me any questions in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your questions, okay? So yeah. Let's not waste time. Let's start. Okay, the first thing that we're going to start with is actually putting cerusing wax in this part and this part. Because I want this good grain to be appreciated and to be seen. Um, so we're going to be doing that part first and then we're going to start with the paint. I'm going to demonstrate to you the application of the sprucing wax. I am applying with a little bristle brush and I am taking the wax from a little saucer plate because it's easier to grab it from there. I'm applying with a wood grain but I'm also um, kind of like brushing it against the wood grain as well just for penetration ensuring that the wax gets absorbed fully. It's actually easy because this piece has been uh, recently sanded, so it's absorbing it really well. Once we're done with this, I'm going to be wiping it off with a shop towel, and then um, I'm going to be doing the other side. It's pretty easy, just take the excess off. We're not actually buffing it but just taking the excess off and in fact i am not going to be buffing this um wax in here so that's pretty much all okay so that's the piece now with the cerusing wax on the two doors as well as the two drawers at the bottom okay so i'm gonna start now painting the outside and we're going to be doing it in two stages the first thing is going to be the outside and then we're going to be doing the inside so we're going to start start from top to bottom and how the technique works is um, basically you dip your brush in paint and uh, you don't saturate it too much it's basically more like dry brushing um, so you kind of like dip your brush into the paint and then clean it really well. See how I'm cleaning? 
and then you start painting and you just drag that paint until your brush is completely like has no paint at all you do some parts heavier than others and you do some very light parts like for example look my brush is almost out of paint there and i keep dragging it and dragging it and, and so the paint is going to penetrate into the wood grain and it's going to give, give that appearance of it's kind of like chipping off so we're just going to be doing that technique um throughout the piece and as i said we're going to be going from top to bottom and one side to the next um just piece by piece if you're not pleased on how a certain area turned out it's not a problem you can always clean your paint i have my little rag up there and i can always clean it i can always wash it and take it off and then reapply it at a later time this is a very forgiving technique and you can just literally do it until you're satisfied with the result the trick is not doing like full coverage but just doing heavier parts and lighter parts um, and then just really omitting some of the parts like for example uh, on this section I am not covering the areas next to the hinges and it gives the appearance that because the door is being opening uh, that's kind of like being peeling off and the paint just worn out or worn off from that from that area so that is really honestly the whole thing is just you know where the paint would have worn off um, and that's how you basically do your design now I'm doing right now the panels around the panels because um, basically that's probably where more paint would have been kept after years of use and I'm using a little Addis brush for this one just because it's a very small area otherwise it's going to just paint other areas that I don't want to touch but I'm gonna be doing the same techniques on top of the panels um, everywhere pretty much um, and just do a design that I feel good with um, and as I said you can always go back and sand it or you can you know wipe off the paint and then just redo your design until you're like fully satisfied so we're continuing now with the side of the armoire and I'm doing exactly the same thing I'm actually just dragging that paint until my brush doesn't have any more keep dragging it I'm not painting some areas and uh, as you see the paint is looking really translucent we're gonna do that and then we're gonna let it dry for about half an hour and we're gonna be doing the inside I decided to paint the inside of the armoire on white and the shelving inside is going to be white as well and I have a little bit of a problem because uh, the stain uh, this dark stain probably was water-based and started to bleed through so I had to once this was dry I had to actually put some matte sealer to block the bleed through and then I put another coat of it um, and then I got a perfect coverage and there was no more bleed through that's a trick that you can use if you ever get bleed through just put a coat of matte sealer and then the problem is solved okay but that's all we're gonna be doing here for the inside and then the drawers I'm painting now the two insides of these doors on this beautiful frankly scarlet color it's a very gorgeous kind of like christmas red i really love the tone and um, basically we're going to be giving two coats on the inside for both drawers now as i explained to you i had the exact same problem um because the stain uh below was bleeding through i didn't want to actually sand it inside because it's a lot of work so um, after I put the first coat, I actually put some matte sealer and then I'm going to be doing another coat and that actually gave a really good coverage. 
So once I'm done painting two coats here, we're going to be decorating the inside of the drawers with a beautiful mesh stencil, okay? So while I complete here, um, don't forget to tag three friends. Tell us from where you're watching as well. I definitely enjoy seeing from where our audience is. And uh, let me know if you're ready for Christmas. I hope you are. Because definitely I have a lot of projects that I still want to get done before Christmas. Okay? Alright, so almost there. Um, as I said, two coats inside. And then we're ready for other things. I'm ready to decorate now the inside doors with the mesh stencil and I'm going to be using Bahas Buff the same color with a little sponge to rub against the mesh stencil and uh, get that stencil beautiful. So what I did is I actually cut my stencil because I think you can achieve the best results like that as opposed to just you know doing one little thing and then moving the entire thing around um, that you can risk that you're gonna stain your red paint so by cutting them i think i can achieve the best result and um, i'm gonna do it quicker and faster so i just saturate my little sponge um, with the bahas buff and rub it against the stencil make sure that you cover everything um and that uh, it is as simple as that i recommend that you do like two or three stencils at a time you no know, more than that and then remove them and go rinse them with soapy water and then you are ready to reuse them if you want to reduce them but otherwise the paint is going to start getting dry and clogged in the mesh and then it's going to be a bit of a problem uh, you're gonna ruin your stencil okay so there you go we're ready to take them out we'll take them off and uh, you can rinse them and let them dry and then you can reuse them at a later time they will last for a very long time so this is the big reveal for our Christmas armoire this is a solid wood piece this is a pine piece i love how it came out at the end like very fresh whitewash look you can appreciate the good grain but you can always appreciate the paint and it is looking like it's been worn off after years of use it looks very freshly cottage French country style and uh, definitely very special to freshen up a room, lighten it up, make it softer and delicate at the same time. For the inside, we painted the inside of the doors with this beautiful frankly scarlet color it really reminds me of a Christmas red really beautiful and delicate color and the mesh stencil just give it the nice little touch there you go the rest in white it has enough space and there it is, our Christmas piece. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did doing this project. There's nothing better than trying doing something with your hands and liking what you do. Have a very Merry Christmas and uh, many blessings. Thank you so much for watching.